it seems like only yesterday I was just here with Peter Jones, who's the lead uh, for CapEx for the Melt Shop, the Electric Arc Furnace and Caster project, when he was walking us through that whole heavy end development uh, around Project Invictus here at the Port Albert site. We paused here by these rail tracks. Uh, as Peter explained to me, this is where the scrap steel is going to be coming onto the site, ready for the electric arc furnace in 2027 and 2028. We've come back today and I'm joined by Lloyd Bryant, a friend of the pod. Thanks Lloyd for joining us. Lloyd, you're head of infrastructure for the Invictus um, investment program. We've come back today to an area that used to be called Peafield. No idea why. If any of our viewers know why it's called Peafield, write in and let us know. Um, tell us a bit about what Peafield used to be and what it's going to be used for in the future. Yeah, sure. So Peafield's basically, Tim, originally was an overspill slab storage yard, um, which was sort of half of the area you can see behind us. There was a number of buns and etc. and storage sort of X materials were stored here. Um, over the last sort of really in earnest since January, We've started the clearance, etc., because this will now become the new scrap handling process plant. Um, but in the meantime, before we're ready to accept the scrap, it's going to be used as the, the welfare village for everybody working on EAF, Tartar and contractors alike. Um, and uh, that's the process of where we are now. It is an absolutely humongous area, isn't it? I remember driving past and thinking Peafield, oh, there's a big enough area and it's got some slabs in it. But like you say, you've taken down the buns and it just extends beyond and beyond and beyond. And we're standing now on a load of concrete, uh, which I guess is necessary for all the scrap receipt and handling. Yeah. How did you get from what must be in a kind of a rubble filled field to this beautiful expanse of concrete that kind of reminds me of the inside of Wembley Stadium before an ACDC gig? Yeah, yeah. so basically um, we've taken the level down a metre. Yeah. Um, Obviously, the guys then, Scots, along with McAlpine supervision, have came in, did all the groundworks, dropped it all down a metre, um, set up then, ready for the concrete pours, set it up into grids. Um, this side of where we walk in now is a double reinforced side because this is where the tumbler trains will drop the scrap, it will yeah. be picked up. The other side is also reinforced because obviously we'll have large machinery and equipment. Yeah. Um, and currently, to date, we are standing in area A, but the side of us is area B. But there will be an area C, which is further down, which will be the whole scrap handling. But for area A and B, we've currently poured around 20,000 square metres of concrete. And we've got another 4,000 metres to go, which will give you sort of the full area A and B ready for the take for the village and the car park. I mean, it is extraordinary. I don't want people, you know, listening to the pod or watching the video to go, listen, they've just poured a load of concrete down. It's not that exciting because... Yeah, the preparation work is incredible, the volume is incredible, and kind of the construction of this site, this is not one flat area, is it? No. It's, it's sloping here, it's sloping up there, there's a big channel in front of us here. Tell me about how that's been designed and for what purpose? So the purpose, like you said, until you sort of really stand on it, sort of where we are, it looks, there's a hell of a slope, but there's also a fair slope coming down from the track. We have two large drainage channels, one just in front of us and one further up. So basically the whole area is designed that it won't hold any water. So all the scrap that comes in will remain dry as possible, obviously, which is best for the process in the plant. Yeah, because it's not a covered area. That would have been a no. completely different project. Yeah. Uh, and there's, uh, there seems to be two channels. There's one this side and one the other. I guess one's for the scrap receipt area and one's for the scrap processing yeah, area where, basically where we drop it so it won't be dropped into any water for the kit to pick it up and then when we sort of store it because we'll have large piles of scrap obviously waiting to go in the AF they'll be sitting up there and obviously no water will sit underneath the piles then they'll run into the further drainage channel up there yeah and I guess again for, for those people who aren't on site or don't know what to expect there's no giant concrete mixer here is it every day I drive past and I see this enormous crane with a pipe coming out of it but where's all that that, which is, I guess, laying down the concrete in these slabs. Well, where's it all coming from? Um, basically, it's a local company that supply it all. Obviously, it's managed by, like I said, by McAlpines and, and Scots are the on-site guys. Um, we aim to sort of pour between... The original plan was two slabs per week. Um, we were obviously weather dependent, but we have been as high as four when the weather's been good with us. And on average, they pour around 21,000 cubic metres a day when we get a fair weather. So, yeah, doing well. And it, and it, as I said, a huge amount of work has gone on in a very short period of time. 
part of me saying, well, why do you have to get it ready so early? Because the scrap's not going to be coming in until end of 2027. We're kind of two years ahead of schedule, but it's going to be used for another purpose in the short term, is it? Yeah, so short term, like I said, so where we stand in now and sort of right back up and the further aspect of where the village is situated, this will be the car park for the village. And at peak, like I said, you know, we'd expect in around 1,200 people to be over here working. Contractors and tartars like so obviously we need quite a large area to park them cars. Yeah, yeah It is a fantastic piece of work and uh, I know you're a busy man and actually we're going to go and uh, talk to you on another topic uh, uh, Shortly, but it's an amazing piece of work. What happens from here on in? Is there a lot more to do and then Then what happens to this area next? Yeah, so obviously like I said with hopefully by Christmas the plan is by Christmas area A and B as we are calling it so we'll have the 24,000 meters cubed done pads drainage in yeah the village then will become operational the area will be sectioned off then for the second part of the work which sort of steps out the enabling works because we're still in the enabling works phase sure. which will be the remainder of the scrapyard and the handling which will go back to the lighting tower so basically we'll um, copy what we've done here to complete area c yeah and i guess this area is going to be taking seventy thousand tons of scrap uh, at its peak peak traffic through the the railway that come in um, and it's interesting to hear, it's not about just receiving scrap, it's about maybe doing a, some processing, some secondary processing and segregating that scrap before it goes into the electric cart furnace. This is fundamental to the whole success of the project, isn't it? Yeah, obviously it's the same as sort of any sort of heavy end process we've ever done really, Tim, the quality of the material that goes in, it guarantees the, the quality of the product that comes out the end. So yeah. getting the scrap right here before it feeds into the EAF is, is critical. And a word of credit, I guess, to the contractors who've been involved, because this has been uh, led by uh, Sir Robert McAlpine team. How have they been collaborating with the Invictus team? Excellent. Um, there's two engineers. Steve Pierce was the head engineer for the enabling works for P Fields. Communication, great, but you know, it's not to say that all the groundworks and the concrete pours have been run by Scott's local yeah. contractor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I, you know, personally, Every time we brought anybody to the site, it's a pleasure to come. Yeah. They're, a, they're a great company, the safety, the way the site looks and the setup, you know, it's comfortable to bring anybody here. They've been yeah. great. Listen, it's fantastic to come down here. Thanks very much for welcoming us down here, Lloyd. And uh, I can't wait to see it until it's complete. It's amazing as it is. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing what happens next. Love to talk to you about the village. Sure. Uh, and that'll be the topic for another video. So if you want to see more about the Electric Art Furnace project here in Port Albert, how work is progressing, then follow us on any of our social media feeds, Tata Steel UK, and see all the videos on YouTube.